The Chateau Gerard La Rousse is a first growth chateau, the highest quality designation possible for a chateau in Bordeaux. The vineyards here are found close to the banks of the Gironde River. This is where the best soils and the most famous chateaus of the left bank are located. And then you have here the Gironde River. Just in front is Chateau Béchevel. Béchevel? Béchevel. Straight there, where you have the small tour over there, it's Chateau La Tour. And right on the left, Pichon Lalande and Pichon Baron. From our vantage point, you can see the 175 acres of vineyard belonging to the chateau. Philippe Carmignac is the cellar master here at Gerard Le Rose. Ah, okay, so this is Gerard La Rose, as you know, and the appellation is Saint Julien. And the particularity of Saint Julien is that you often have tannins that are very sappy and rich. Um, however, it, here at Gerard La Rose, it's um, perhaps the most uh, full expression of that with tannins, they have very deep gravel here for the Cabernet Sauvignon mm. and you get uh, tannins that are quite uh, uh, sustained and in fact it almost is bordering on a Poyac style more than the softness traditional of saint julien The region here used to be very swampy until Dutch traders in the 17th century drained the area with canals, which are still very much in use today. And you can see on these um, uh, fields here, green fields that they're drained, you can see these drains here, that go where you see that bridge is, it's what's called a jal, which is like a drainage ditch that was created or dug by the uh, Dutch when they were here. Uh, this goes back a couple hundred years. And uh, the idea is that it drains all the surface water off and then it goes in this drainage ditch or jal, which is a term from the Medoc, directly into the Gironde. At Gerard La Rose, they are committed to making a traditional style of Bordeaux wine that respects their specific soils and climate. Terroir. Absolutely. So, that's a one word. <laughs> because the richness of the, not the richness, the richness of the terroir here is that it does give wines that are very um, tannic, uh, forceful, and so on, and they need and they should be kept in order to find their fullest expression a minimum of 10 years. And if we at Gru la Rose, they want to be very careful of not falling into a short term trap of making wines, adulterating, if you will, the potential of the terroir here by making wines that are drinkable sooner, flattering, etc., etc., um, just for short term interest because that's sort of what the market's looking for at the moment. They want to retain the authenticity of the terroir here, and that's the way as we'll see in a few moments when we taste, uh, that's what the wines here are about. Chateaus producing classified growth wines represent only 5% of the total production in Bordeaux, but they are not afraid to spend whatever it takes to obtain the highest quality wine possible. For instance, most of the wine is fermented in these large and very expensive oak fermentation tanks. Another very important contribution the Dutch made to the success of Bordeaux was to pioneer the use of sulfites in the wine. This prevents spoilage and allows the wines to age properly. Production at these first growth chateaus tends to be large, and so the barrel cellars are a thing of wonder. Downstairs? Yeah. There's more? Yeah. In fact, this one is three stories deep. Oh, yeah. It is the total combination of a perfect vintage, care in the vineyard, and care in the winery that allows some first growth Bordeaux wines to age for many, many years. Years. Uh, we are here in the private cellar of the chateau, of the winery Chateau Gru La Rose. And here you have uh, 
uh, the holders bottle is from 1815. There are two left that you can see here. As I was explaining at first, I mean, the wines from Bordeaux are always part of our history. And uh, this is something that's quite unique in the world, in the Bordeaux, I mean, to, to have uh, the potential of uh, aging for years and even century as we have here. You like Bordeaux? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes. Team? Plein de plein de promesses. The most important thing is to share with uh, everybody. It's not something that we can keep for ourselves. It's a thing that we have to to share, share, share and share. And, uh, like at noon we were at lunch and like in the US for lunch we take 20 minutes. Here we take one hour and a half and we take two hours and we drink wines and we share. Even if it works, but we share food and wine and this is part also of our uh, culture and uh, history. Whether it's from a famous chateau or a humble farm, French wine is a living piece of history that should be shared and enjoyed among friends, with food, and with patience.